everyone and welcome to another box opening. Uh, so I'm doing the uh, October 2020 box, which means that I will have opened uh, through various videos, I will have opened a year's worth of boxes because the first box that I got was the October 2019 box, which I got a few bonus uh, items uh, for starting a subscription with uh, the Tokyo Treat box. Um, so this box got a little bit mangled in the transport, but that's okay as long as hopefully everything is still uh, in good condition inside of the box. Uh, so with that, we will get to uh, opening the box and starting some snacks. Okay, so first things first is we'll take a look at the uh, booklet that came with it. So clearly it's for Halloween because it is the October box. Um, so we'll take a look inside and see what's in this box booklet. So again, a note from the Tokyo Treat team. Um, chance to fill out or to get more um, Kit Kat. So I did scan it last time um, from the last box and um, in order to get uh, a chance to win some goodies you have to fill out um, some reviews. So I will probably get around to that at some point. Uh, just haven't had the time to write any reviews. Um, also a really cool uh, Pokemon prize box that would have been really cool to get. Um, are those Pikachu slippers? Wondering, let's see. <gasps> they are! Oh my goodness, I would have loved to have gotten Pikachu slippers. That would have been super cute. Though I would have been happy with pretty much anything. Though I'm not a big fan of uh, Gengar. Uh, and I get that they would choose him because it's uh, for Halloween, but uh, I would rather get a Pikachu prize, really. And then the list of snacks that are here. Um, prizes if you entered the photo contest. Now these I definitely would have loved because like I've mentioned before that Eevee is one of my uh, favorite Pokemon. I love that it has so many different evolutions that it can uh, become. Well, I guess they're evolutions. Um, you do have to use certain stones to get it to evolve. And then um, then they have a bit about, uh, I guess, Halloween in Japan. And then on the back they usually show uh, some Instagram photos, the people who were selected. If you, um, if you get your, you know, if you take a picture with your Tokyo Treat boxes, there's a chance you could end up uh, having your picture featured in the booklet. So, as usual, I will start with the drink. I just realized that I brought my glass up, but I didn't bring any ice to drink or to add with it. So the drink that they um, provided is this one here. So you can read that it says creme brulee on the bottle. And the description is uh, Lipton creme brulee milk tea. So already I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so Halloween is uh, when the nights get longer and spookier, but the sweet caramel flavor of the new Halloween limited edition of Lipton Milk Tea will help uh, keep your, you company on scary nights. The cute spooky packaging and rich creme brulee flavor are not to be missed this spooky season. So I do like the packaging, the little bats on there and they have little ghosts. And I do really like creme brulee. Oh, I didn't notice this on the other side here. They've got where they've got Waldo and his dog, which I don't remember what the name of that is. So that it says there. So 2020 limited edition uh, bottle. So I will be back. I am gonna get some ice to put in my cup, and then I will try it because if uh, if I'm gonna have milk tea, I might as well have it chilled. So give me one moment. Okay, so. We will, I'm going to pour some in and then give it a taste and see how it is. And hopefully I wasn't supposed to shake it up, but I might because I think there might be some sediment in it. Okay. I don't think I'll be able to fit the full bottle in there. So I'll top it off as we go. Give that a taste. Oh, that's really good. Um, 
it definitely has that creme brulee, that kind of uh, caramelized sugar um, taste to it, um, as well as that milk tea, kind of traditional milk tea flavor, so it's a bit of a sweeter version of a milk tea. I don't mind it at all. I think it tastes pretty good. So I'm going to put that off to the side here, and we'll start uh, with one of our snacks. This one here just really stands out to me. I like the <laughs> the design of it overall. I'm pretty sure it's a sweet potato or a taro snack. So I'm going to find that here. So that's the uh, sweet potato karusatsuma sticks. So the packaging might be giving a scary look, uh, or giving you a scary look, but inside you'll find a tasty surprise. Crunchy pretzel sticks. Sti <laughs> pretzel sticks with a sweet potato flavor baked in, uh, baked right in. A must-try uh, Japanese snack for this autumn. Okay, so we're gonna open that up like so. So it comes in packaging like this. Uh, it shows that there's a way to tear it. So it looks like what you're supposed to do is. Um, Pull it from these this kind of cut tab here, and pull it open this way. Okay, that worked out pretty well. I'm gonna pull off the whole of it if I can. There we go. Okay. And there's what it looks like. So it kind of has like a pretz stick look to it, um, but a little skinnier and with a hint of kind of a purple color on it. It's hollow. Very interesting. Um, the flavor, I don't know how to describe it. Like if you put candy on a pretzel stick. It's a very different flavor, that's for sure. Cinnamon has decided to come and lay by my feet as I do this. I like it, but I would say it's not my favorite flavored snack that I've had. It does have a bit of that sweet potato taste to it. Okay, the next one we're going to look at, because it happens to be the closest, is this one here, which clearly is the shape of a bat. Um, this one. So just by grabbing this one, it looks like it's this one here. This is the Ghoulish Gummies. Uh, so we were trying to make a Gummy Frankenstein's monster, but had a few spooky... Uh, um, or sorry, we were trying to make a gummy, gummy Frankenstein's monster, but had a few spooky sweet gummies left over. Are you brave enough to try these tasty spooky sweets? So it looks like there's a few different shapes that it could be. There's a few different colored bats, and a spider, and possibly some vampire teeth, and maybe an eyeball. Uh, and I got the traditional bat. I wonder if it's going to taste like black licorice. Because of the color, it kind of makes me think of a black licorice candy. And, I mean, it wouldn't be terrible if it tasted like black licorice. There you go. You can see the bat shape there. Uh, it's very cute. Give that a try. Oh, I was expecting it to be more gummy. It's a little bit of a harder candy. It has to be very hard to chew. Mm, it's definitely not black licorice. Mm -hmm. Flavor-wise, kind of like a grape soda, mixed with something else. Have you ever had those candies that they're, um, what are they called? Um, I forget what they're called, but they're like the gum-flavored, um, or not gum, soap-flavored gum. It kind of has that taste to it, mixed with like a grape soda. 
I don't mind the taste of it, it's just, it also has a very synthetic taste to it. It's pretty good though. It's, um, really good, though I wish it was a little less chewy. Um, it did make it hard to eat. Uh, the next one I'm going to do is this one here. So it uh, looks like it's Frankenstein's monster. And uh, see if we can find that in this package. Okay, yep, so it's right underneath the ghoulish gummies. So it's called Franken Gum. So yes, it is Frankenstein's monster. Uh, a Halloween treat with a hidden surprise. Uh, this tasty soda flavored gum will turn your mouth green. Try, uh, try it with friends for a fun Halloween prank. So basically, I won't tell my parents that it <laughs> will make their uh, tongues green. I'll let them find that out for themselves. So I should probably warn them not to do it, or to have some when they're working, since they both have to be on uh, the computer to do that. If I can get the packaging off, that would be great. It's kind of... They did a really good job of making it stick. So they have the tearaway plastic so that you can seal it off, but then the piece of the plastic that stayed on, there we go. It's hard to get off. Okay. So it looks similar to the other gums that have been in the previous boxes. Where it's just that round, typical round ball shape. It kind of looks like a pea, actually. So it tastes like Ramune. Um, so yeah. Again, the gum always tends to um, tends to feel like it's dissolving as I'm chewing it. Um, so it's <clears throat> definitely an interesting flavor. And I'm wondering if it makes my tongue green. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, the gum again. It, it's kind of a typical gum that doesn't seem to last for very long. Um, I like the taste of it. Definitely because it has that Ramune uh, flavor. It's fine. But the flavor lasts uh, longer than the actual consistency of the gum. So I'm seeing if I can find something to spit the gum into. So I'm going to use this wrapper here, so give me a second. Okay. So then the next snack we're going to look at is this one here, because it has Doraemon on it. You can kind of see it. Is it Doraemon? No. Mm, not really. It looks like the character that they use for the, all the Umaibo snacks. Which I have a feeling means that this is going to be similar to Umaibo, except maybe not as a long tube, maybe more like a Ringolo shape. So, uh, on the booklet, it says here, these are Umaibo Rings Mentai. Mentai. Um, so with all these sweet treats, we uh, need to add a little heat to our, hunger, to our hungry, hungry Halloween. This classic Umaibo in ring form is exactly what we need. The crunchy corn snack is the perfect, slightly spicy treat to shake up your sweet snack party. Well, which is good, because all I've been having <coughs> for the first few snacks is sweet. <clears throat> might have to take a sip of uh, tea. It, the gum leaves kind of a, a weird sensation in the back of the throat. Okay, so I was right. It's basically a Maibo, but um, in a ring form. So it's a little bigger than a Ringolo would be. Um, Interesting. There's a bit of spice to it. I don't know if it's something that after a few of them, maybe you get more of the spice. And it has a little bit of a fishy aftertaste to it, too. But I really don't find it that spicy. I may not be the best person to gauge levels of spice since 
I treat the sriracha sauce like it's uh, ketchup. It's pretty good. I wish it was more spicy though. Uh, the next one that I'm going to open is this one here. So it's got a little ghost character on it. Uh, if we take a look, this is possibly the same kind of um, snack that we had in, which was it, the, I think the June, May or June box, uh, which was that um, marshmallow with the pudding in the center. So it says here, uh, Halloween pudding marshmallow, so there's a pretty good chance. Um, scary and sweet, but you don't need to worry about this friendly ghost in uh, this friendly ghost inside the marsh the sweet marshmallow. You'll find a Japanese pudding center. If only all ghosts were so sweet. So, like I was saying, it's probably a good chance that this is um, going to be like the one from the previous box. But I really like Japanese pudding. There's just something about the way that they make it. The flavor is just so good. So again, kind of that fluffy marshmallow shape. Um, I have a feeling that very much this is the exact same thing, just with different packaging. Oh. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't bite into it so that I could show you the filling, but it's the same thing. It's basically the same thing, just with Halloween packaging. Though because it's a bit more of a recent box, the marshmallow is not as hard. <clears throat> okay, so then the next one we're going to look at is this one here. And I, all I can read on there, so it says um, on the packaging, Shime Choco Kon. Uh, so I'm guessing maybe chocolate corn. Um, she may, she may, Hmm. So this is probably the closest one, but it says it's supposed to be a Pokemon Halloween chocolate corn. So I'm just going to quickly take a look and see if I can find it before I go opening this and reading the wrong packaging. Okay, so this is not that one. It's not that. Okay, so this one, I'm just looking through these because before I missed them all. So I have a feeling that this might be the mystery snack. Um, so uh, we need a surprise this Halloween. That's why the last item you'll be getting is something even we don't know. Enjoy your spooky Japanese snack that is uniquely yours. So I got this um, chocolate corn snack, um, and I like the shape of it, the kind of the stars that they're hollow. So I'm really hoping that it will look exactly like how it is in the packaging. Take a look at it. So yeah, it's basically that uh, unique shape there, and as you can see, very much just star shaped. Ooh, I like the texture. There's almost like um a bit of a chocolate coating on the outside of it, very lightly. It's like um like those cocoa puff cereal taste, but I like it better than the cocoa puff. This is dangerous. This is actually really good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Too good. It's very hard to stop eating them. I kind of wish there was more in the packaging, because there aren't that many. I want to share them, but I also want to eat more. So maybe I'll eat one more, and there's four left there, so each of my parents can have two. That is so good. Mm-hmm. So good. That was an excellent mystery snack. I like that a lot. Very much. 
So this box definitely seems to have more sweet than savory um, snacks to it. So I'm just quickly taking a look here. Let's see. Yeah, there's only a few savory items, so I'm going to do a few sweet snacks kind of back to back to back, and then it's, uh, kind of put in some savory stuff in between. So the next one I'm going to do is this one here, and find it in the booklet. So it's this one here. So Monster Stamp Ramune. So again, Ramune, gotta love it, because I just love the drink. Is that a stamp? Is it a candy? Uh, it's both. Lick this Ramune soda candy, and then you can use it as a stamp with a ghoulish cute design. Okay. Interesting. So. Lick it, and then stick it. So I'm going to take out... I'll take them all, or I'll take one out for now. Let's see what I get. So I've got this one here, which is a ghost. Um, so I'm curious as to how it's going to look. So I have my um, mouse pad here, which is actually a notepad that I use uh, for planning stuff. <clears throat> so I'm going to use that to test out the. Um, to test it out. So, give it a lick and give it a stick. Kind of worked. Kind of looks like a ghost, I guess. Somewhat. Uh, the middle part is supposed to be, I think, like a bow tie. Maybe I looked it too well. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's a fun little novel snack to try. Um, I think I'd rather just eat it though. Tempted to just chew it, though I'm not, because I'm not going to really use it as a stamp. Um, it's a little hard to chew though. That's the only issue. There we go. So while we're doing that, I wanted to just take a look and see what other shapes there were. Maybe they're all the same thing. Just in different colors. It's a ghost. Nope, oh, nope. I think that's supposed to be a witch. I'm guessing it's supposed to be a witch. <clears throat> Looks like it. And then, last one, is a different kind of ghost. So since I'm already eating the blue one, the blue one is the same as the green one, and they look very similar. And the purple one, yeah, they're basically, oh, I wonder if that's supposed to be their mouth. I was thinking it was a bow tie, but maybe it's supposed to be their mouth in a different shape. It's a very hard candy to eat, though. This would be better enjoyed if you just suck on it. The hardest part is where the handle is for the stamping. It's so noisy. And so sweet. It basically tastes like rocket candies. Um, so the next one I'm going to do is this one here. So it's kind of similar packaging to the um, to those stamp uh, candies. And this one is Monster uh, Monster Gum Energy Flavor. I could use some energy. Um, some monsters are sweet, some are sour. This tasty pack of gum features both. But which one will you be trying? This is a surprise. Are you ready? I am ready. Bring it on. Looks like I might have something to do with soda, because that's a soda can there with some eyes sticking out. 
Okay, so I'm guessing it's supposed to be hit or miss. You're not quite sure which one you're going to get. This one, however, looks like a lemon. Sour? Sour? Okay. I'm getting more sour. Mm. Oh my gosh. Super sour. <laughs> it's so sour. And yet I can't stop chewing it. It's like sucking on a lemon. <clears throat> First part when you chew it, it's not so bad. And the more you chew it, that's all you can taste. It's just lemon. Sourness. Like taking a Sour Patch Kid and dialing it up to 11. <clears throat> Does it get sweet at all, or does it just stay sour the whole time? Maybe my tongue is getting used to it, or the flavor is disappearing. Okay. So based on my reaction, you can tell it's very sour. My eye is actually watering a little. And how sour it is. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> the sourness is not going away. So I'm just going to chew on it until I open up my next snack. And then, um, I'll spit it out. So the next one I'm going to try is... Okay, so we're going to try this one next. Um, very Halloween pattern there. So this one says Halloween corn pizza flavor. Nothing's better than pizza and a scary movie marathon at Halloween. Enjoy these light and fluffy Japanese pizza corn snacks while you uh, watch some scary goodness. I'm not a horror film person. It wouldn't be something that I would watch. Um, unless it's like those kind of like scary movies for kids. Like if it's Hocus Pocus or... Jeez, what other movies do I actually like to watch around Halloween? I actually try to make it a tradition of watching uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller music video at Halloween. But I don't actually watch a lot of horror or Halloween type shows. So we will open that up and see what it looks like. Let's see inside. So it's like those typical kind of corn snacks that we've had before. Um, first thing I'm going to do is spit out my gum. Wow, was that ever sour? <clears throat> okay, so there you go. You can see that that's what it looks like there. Um, we'll give that a try. Ooh. Mm. I love how things that, whether it's here or in Japan, anything that's pizza flavor isn't actually pizza flavored. It does have kind of a tomato saucy taste to it, so I guess it's closer to being pizza flavor than some of the other things that I've had. It's good though. I like it a lot. Very good. Definitely the best pizza flavored pizza flavored snack I've had. Okay, so the next one that I'm gonna open is this one here, which is kind of a soda bottle guy. And uh it's, uh, where is it? Here we go. Ooh, grape soda gummy. So after a long night of trick-or-treating, a sour shock in your candy is just what you need, uh, or what we need. Enjoy this refreshing sour grape, uh, soda gummy that will wipe away any fatigue. So, just what I needed. <clears throat> More sour after having that sour lemon gum. And now when I know that when they say sour, they, they mean business. So there is the soda shape of the candy. 
as you can see. Very sugar coated, which could be the sour stuff that they put on it. I'm afraid to say that it isn't sour because I'm like waiting for that sourness to kick in. But it's not very sour yet. It tastes like grape soda. And not our grape soda. It's not like grape crush. It's like that um grape Fanta that I had in in the was it the, it was the birthday box. Um the June box. It tastes like that, so it tastes like real grapes. It's not very sour, which is fine by me. Um, so we're now moving on to the this one here, which accidentally fell on the ground when I was moving stuff. So this is caramel corn, uh, and we've seen these before. Um, kind of wondering if this was the same as the uh, previous October box. Maybe. Um, so I'll read what the package says here. So, caramel corn pop pumpkin pudding flavor. Ooh, pumpkin pudding. Um, can you take on the sweet vampire? The, the delicious, light and fluffy classic Tahoto uh, caramel corn has a Halloween surprise. Using pumpkin paste, egg, nectar, and condensed milk, it is a pumpkin pudding flavor. And the cute vampire packaging makes it uh, extra spooky. Really? I think it just makes it look extra cute. Show that. So there you go. That's what it looks like. Kind of like a shrimp. But probably tastes a lot better than shrimp. Not that there's anything wrong with the taste of shrimp. I like the taste of shrimp. Mmm. Mmm. Yay for pumpkin pudding. Oh, that's good. It's kind of similar to the vanilla pudding, with more of the pumpkin taste to it. I was going to say it kind of reminds me of a pumpkin latte, but it's definitely not as synthetic of a taste as some of those pumpkin spice lattes. And it doesn't have the same spices as a pumpkin pie. But it reminds me of... Um, these pumpkin Kit Kats that I brought back from one of my trips from to Japan, um, I had brought them back so that I could share them with my students. And that's what it tastes like. It's a, kind of an airy, puffy version of the uh, pumpkin Kit Kats that I brought back for my students. So it's very good. Definitely very easy to, to eat a lot of it. And then the next one that I'm going to do is uh, this one here. So you can see, it looks like he's holding a beer. I don't think that they would give us a beer snack, though. You never, you never know. I mean, I could be wrong. So this is part of the premium package. This is maple butter beer. Okay, so it is beer. Or butter beer. Uh, Ramune candy. You don't need to head to a wizarding school for this fizzy candy. The mellow flavor of this Ramune candy will fizz away in your mouth and dissolve like magic. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so this is just like those other Ramune snacks. So the one that was the uh, September, um, the September box had the Ramune candy as well. So it's probably just going to dissolve in my mouth as I eat it very quickly. Mm. Don't think I've ever had butter beer before, but I like this. Kind of a caramelly taste to it. I do like it. <clears throat> 
so yeah it does have a very buttery taste to it and caramelly taste to it and it dissolves like the regular ramen mi candy does so we're down to our last few snacks so the next one that i'm gonna open which is the third last no wait there's not the third last this is the fourth last snack is this one here so it looks like a taiyaki and you can clearly say that it says zombie on it and we'll read what this says which is bubbly taiyaki berry zombie so i remember having this before and i didn't really like the taste of it just because it had a very synthetic taste to it um but i will be willing to try it so this is one zombie you'll want to bite inside the crunchy green and black japanese fish shaped wafer you'll find fruity berry flavored chocolate so leave the brains and pick up a tasty taiyaki or eat the fish's brain Oh wait, no, this is the third, third last item. And I already know that I'm going to like the way that this looks. So, mm, green-ish, definitely more on the blue, like a turquoise -y color. Oh, okay, and then that's black. But in this lighting, it's actually more green-tinted. So that's what it looks like. And again, that fish shape to it. I'm gonna bite it. So you can see the berry filling inside. It kind of gives a brains look to it. I definitely like the um, brain, or not the brain, the inside more than I do the outside. The outside is definitely more synthetic tasting, but the berry chocolate on the inside is very good. I can't help but think that it looks like innards, so it makes it a little bit unnerving to eat it, but I like it. <clears throat> I'm gonna put that aside. We're almost there. We're down to our last two items. And I'm actually gonna go out of order a bit, because usually I like to save the Kit Kat for last. Um, but this is a Kit Kat flavor I know that I've had before because I'm pretty sure it came in the last October box, which is the apple pie flavored one. So I can already tell you it tastes really good and that it very much tastes like apple pie. But I can assure you that I doubt they would have changed the, the taste from one year to the next. very cute oh, so you can write little notes on these ones or they already have messages on them so yes uh, what does it say shinai to itazurashi chauzo i have no idea i will have to figure out the translation so it says trick or treat so the design is a little bit different but i would imagine that the taste is the same I really can't imagine the taste being any different, and these ones did not melt, so they should look like a traditional Kit Kat. The last few boxes melted, they clearly came on warm days. So there you go. So the thing that I always found interesting was that they are um, purple rather than uh, what you would picture as maybe like more of a brownish color. Or red so here it says what's in what's that hiding in the ghostly purple packaging it's the Halloween exclusive Kit Kat apple pie in between the three layers of light wafer is apple cream all wrapped in a purple apple pie chocolate with biscuit pieces worked into the chocolate it's terrifyingly tasty so yeah basically tastes the same as um, the other Kit Kat oh. <laughs> Cinnamon scared herself with her home <laughs> sleeping. She rolled over and accidentally bumped into the treat box that I put on the floor. It's still good. It definitely tastes like apple pie. It tastes like the apple pie that you get at McDonald's, but creamier. I bet you it would actually taste good if you just warmed it up for a few seconds and it'd be like having hot apple pie.
so good. I love it. <clears throat> it's like getting apple pie without having to go through all the mess with eating it. And our last one that I'm going to open up is actually this one here. So this is Pringles. Um, so there was a few options for this one. This could have been a few different things, but it's also from the premium package. And it is the from the Halloween Pringles and Chip Star selections. So bringing some crunchy goodness to you this Halloween, you could pick up the super delicious and traditional Chip Star soy sauce flavor. Oh. Um, Asia exclusive spicy seafood Tom Yum Kung Oh Tom Yam Kung Pringles or the curious Japanese exclusive um, mysterious or mystery flavor Pringles. So clearly I got the Tom Yum uh, uh, Tom Yum one, which means that it's basically I'm really hoping that it's gonna taste like Tom Yum soup. Because that would be fantastic. I do like Tom Yum soup a lot. Open that up. So, typical Pringles, a little bit smashed up in the container, but that's to be expected. Things get moved around. Um, so as you can see, just a typical Pringles shape. Nothing too different from other Pringles. And we'll taste it and see. Mm-hmm. Mm mm. Now, when they say spicy, this is what I'm expecting. Oh my gosh. If Tom Yum Soup was put in a, in a chip, it would, it's definitely, they did a good job of just capturing that Tom Yum uh, flavor. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. Like, if I can find this in a grocery store, I'm gonna get it again. I love the spice. If you're not a big spice person, this is not the tip for you. It's definitely pretty spicy. I wouldn't say the spiciest chip that I've ever had because I've had some pretty spicy chips and they also came from Japan. Um, but if you have a very low tolerance for spice, this is definitely not the chip for you. You'd be better off with um, these guys because there really isn't any spice to it. These uh, Umaibo rings. <clears throat> this, however, actually tastes like Tom Yum. It has a really nice kick to it. Heck, I'd like it if it was even a bit more spicy, but a few after a while, um, or eating a few of them, the spiciness sits on your tongue, which is just fantastic. Um, so, I was thinking of having a sip of my milk tea, but I want to savor the, the flavor of this one. It's just so good. So, <clears throat> we're almost done the book. We're going to take a look at the how Halloween is celebrated in Japan. <clears throat> so, we're going to start here. Uh, with Explore Japan. So Japan is famous for having plenty of cool characters and concepts. People use um, as the basis for costumes and cosplay. Uh, but the big question is, what should I be this Halloween? We've got you covered. Take the quiz below uh, for your perfect Japanese ins character inspired costume. Okay, so not so much about well, kind of. It's kind of to do with Japanese culture because it either has something to do with Japanese anime or Japanese folklore. So either one could work. Uh, I'm going to see if I can zoom in a little bit. Hopefully it's still somewhat uh, legible. Yep. Okay, so here. Um, let's start with the cute. We're going to go the ko uh, kawaii uh, way. So, are you a human? Uh, let's say, yes, we're human. Uh, do you have a secret identity? Shh. So, yes. Uh, so that means you are, <laughs> you go as Sailor Moon. Uh, we'll go back here. Are you human? Yes. Do you have a secret identity? Nah. No secrets here. So then you'd be Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service. Back up to the ghost. Are you human? Nope. How tall are you? We're going to say huge. So then you would go with Totoro. Back again. How tall are you? I'm small. Go with Pikachu. Okay. So then we're going to go back and we're going to take the spooky route. So kawaii. Uh, traditional or modern? Let's go with... Let's go with traditional. So traditional. Are you flying or swimming? Let's go with flying. So then you'd be Tengu. Um, Tengu. 
is a kind of is pretty sure it's like a, a demon or a devil uh, creature, kind of a crow character, or it has crow wings. Um, it sometimes has a really long nose, and then if you're not flying but you're swimming, you're Kappa. So Kappa is a river demon or a river monster. I believe the the folklore goes. Um, I think it was meant to be used as a warning for children not to play near water. So Kappa could lure you away and pull you into the water. Um, it basically it looks kind of like a turtle on two legs, hind, um, a turtle and a frog, and it usually has um, kind of a almost like a bowl on its head, which is said to have water that it stores there. So then we're gonna go back up to here. Are you traditional or modern? We're gonna go modern. So uh, spooky, kawaii. So spooky, cute. Um, yes, you're cute. So blushes. Uh, then your no face from Spirited Away. Spooky, uh, spooky. So spooky, scary. Uh, growls. So then you'd be Sadoko from The Ring. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> so, The Ring, I don't like horror movies, and they can be really creepy, and Sadoko just, it just, from The Ring just creeps me out. The noises and the hair hanging from the face and all that stuff, it just creeps me out. And I remember doing an escape room that was kind of based on uh, Sadoko, and it was absolutely horrifying. Like, we managed to escape from the escape room, um, but definitely it got your adrenaline rushing. There was a lot of jump scare things, sound effects, they actually had that Sadoko character uh, in there. Fortunately it wasn't a live actor. I think it would have flipped out. Um, <clears throat> but it was quite the interesting experience. Um, I do miss those times when I could go with friends and do escape rooms, and I'd be willing to do more scary escape rooms, though I do prefer the ones that are a little more uh, happy, or uh, more like stopping the villain kind of thing rather than trying to escape from a haunted house. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed that uh, box. We've now done, uh, that means that I've been doing treat boxes for just over a year now because I have at least done from October 2019 to October 2020. So I have a few more boxes still to open uh, until I've caught up and I hope that I will see you soon. Bye. <music>